Hey, and welcome to the Ambitious Bookkeeper Podcast. I'm Serena Shoup. I am a CPA and mom of three, and I'm running a virtual bookkeeping business mostly from my home. You're in the right place if you're a bookkeeper, accountant, or an accounting student, and you know that your purpose is bigger than sitting in a cubicle. If you're ready to learn some actionable tips and strategies to help you start and grow a bookkeeping or accounting business, I hope you stick around. Welcome back to the Ambitious Bookkeeper podcast. This is a special, special bonus episode. I have one of my very first cohort members of the Bookkeeping Business Accelerator, Misa, on here. And if you've been in my world for a while, you might recognize her name because I always use her as a case study. (laughs) And I'm so grateful that we crossed paths way back in 2020. Is that right? Yeah, it was 2020. And you were one of five members in the original BBA cohort. So would you like to introduce yourself to our listener? Sure. I would love to. And thank you for having me, Serena. It's it's good to catch up like three years later. So yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful. I feel, yeah. I feel like we've kept in pretty good touch on, on yeah. social media and yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So I'm Misa, as Serena said, and I'm the owner of Perfectly Kept Books, which is a bookkeeping firm for, you know, specifically for women entrepreneurs. That's usually my go to, you know, I don't discriminate. So I do help men every now and then, but the women are the ones that I really, really want to support because from the beginning, I've always said that they're the ones that need the support more than, more than the men, because usually men, they can find the support somewhere or, you know, they have it out there. It's easy, but women it's harder because usually it's not just, I need help with bookkeeping. There's also some other things, some emotional things, some, you know, there's things that we Mm -hmm. usually deal with and talk and don't feel comfortable talking about. And I want to make sure that people have that space to be open and be honest and be vulnerable because that's what business finance is. And yeah, that's, that's, that's the role I want to (laughs) play. Yeah. That's so awesome. That's so true. And so of the women entrepreneurs you work with are, are, do they tend to be in similar industries or do you work with a broad range of industry? I know that's always a question for bookkeepers. Like, should I niche or should I not? <laughs> I just sort of like, I do lean towards the creative entrepreneurs. So, you know, photographers or any, any type of creative endeavor, like whatever you can think of, because those are the ones who they probably need our help the most. Because they're, you know, they're creative people. They're not thinking about numbers. They don't like numbers. It's it's not fun. They just want to go and create and do their thing and have a wonderful time. And understanding that, I can kind of help to relate to them because I, I know that in the back of my mind, they don't care about this stuff. Like, they're just like, whatever. But if they can have someone to at least explain it and get that understanding that they need so that when they are out there trying to build their business, they're, you know, they have real information and they're not just kind of like guessing. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's like my, that's usually what I lean towards when I, those people are like my favorite, but you know, I've worked with all kinds of different businesses. So like therapists that I also lo- like working with them too, just because, well, one, I'm a big fan of therapy, but also they, they're all, they, they need that support too, because it's like, they're out here trying to serve their clients and they need help with that, you know, that back end work, which is important too, because yeah, I mean, the finance part is, it's the most important part of the business. That's what I always say, because, yeah. you know, all you, all you hear talk, you know, talking about like sales and marketing and, and I'm like, that's great. That's wonderful. You need those things, but without the financial piece, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So can you walk us through your journey from start to where you are now and some, I don't know, little nuggets along the way, I'm (laughs) sure we'll find, but (laughs) yes. Okay. So 2020, we all know what was happening in 2020. And I had always had in the back of my mind that I wanted to start some type of business, but I wasn't sure, like, what do I want to do? You know, you know, we're like, what do I want to do? I was working in corporate and I worked in accounting. So I was in the accounting department and I had been working in the accounting department forever. I mean, I have a degree in accounting, like that's, it makes sense. And I was like, hmm, 
when I thought about all the questions that I would ask, like just, just in general, like while working where I'm like, I'm like, who's managing their books? How are they double paying invoices? How are they, you know, I would ask those questions and I was like, hmm, bookkeeping. And so, you know, I went down my rabbit hole of research and, and, you know, I was like, I made a decision to at least say, Hey, I want to do bookkeeping. That's, that was my first decision. And then, you know, all my research, I was like, okay, I think I can do this. I, you know, let me go ahead and get everything set up because that's just how I am. I like, I like to, you know, check all the boxes and do all the things because I want to do it right. So, you know, I set up a business, I picked a name, I did all those fun things. And then I was like, okay. And I kind of was just like sitting there, (laughs) like doing nothing. And I still cannot remember how I came across Serena's website. It was, of course, during my research and I came across her website and I just like went through all the blog posts, all the, like everything that she had available. And I was like, oh, okay. This is someone who's like speaking my actual language because, you know, you know, people coming from corporate and wanting to go off on their own and like making it into where it's, it just, it didn't feel very account, accounty you know, accounting, you know, <laughs> like it didn't feel like we know how that is, but I was like, ah, I thought, I think, I said, I think this is someone I could probably relate to. And so I started following Serena and all her stuff and down, getting all the downloads and buying, I was like getting whatever. Cause I like to collect information. That's just, that's how I operate. I collect Find information. <laughs> yes. I, I collect everything. And then, and then once I have all the information, then I can kind of say, okay, this is what I need. Oh, this will work. Or I'll take this. And that's, that's like how I've always been. That's how I've always worked. Like, mm-hmm. like when, when people ask questions, I'm like, send me an email. Cause I'm like, I want to give me all the information. I can sit with it. I can kind of, you know, get what I need. And then I can, you know, respond however I need to. And so once I found Serena, that was, I mean, that was like the beginning. Cause then I was like, okay, she's, she's opening this program. And I said, I'm going to sign up. And I'm like, I'm going to do this. I was like, this is going to be the way that I'm going to do it. And I'm like, I know I need someone to hold me accountable to do some things. <laughs> so I saw, like, I I waited because I want to say between the time that, like, I found Serena's website and when, you know, you actually opened your first, you know, you actually opened it up for enrollment. I think there were like a couple months in between. So I I was sitting there waiting. And as soon as she opened it up, I I, I signed up and then I was, I was like so excited because I was like, yay, I'm going to get started. And it was so helpful. It like, she gave me all the, all the basics and all the information that I needed to, to really get started. Like none of the kind of the, you know, Hey, do this thing, do that. Cause I'm like, I can do that on my own. I can research the, you know, starting a business, like all that basic stuff. That's thing. Those are things I can do. It's like, now I need to figure out how do I get a client? How do I get yeah. people to pay me? Cause that's, that's the biggest problem is like, I started a business, but are people actually going to pay me? Cause that was, that was what I was afraid is like, like, are people actually going to want to work with me and actually yeah. like pay me money to, to do bookkeeping? You know, like that was my thing. And so, you know, went through the whole program. It was, it was great. Cause I, I loved having like the check-ins and, you know, someone to actually make sure I do things because, you know, if I have someone to make sure that I like make sure I check that box, I'm more inclined to do it. So, so mm-hmm. I checked all the boxes and I I remember when I started like going out to like find clients, one of the ways I was using was Upwork. And so, you know, I was submitting proposals and, and I like, I got, you know, I got a response. Someone responded and they were like, Hey, can you help me clean up my books? And I, I remember, I still remember, I like, Send a boxer to Serena, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I need, I, I, I need help with this cleanup because I don't know what to do. I don't know what steps to take, and I need, I'm like, I don't know." And so, like, she, she sent me because she had, it was some res- a cleanup resource, some kind of guide or something, and that, like, I just needed that to kind of help me get started. And yeah, so that was like my first client, and it was, it was hard because just because I didn't know what I was doing, yeah. and. But I, I like, I got through it and like, I would, I would ask Serena so many questions when they came up. Cause I'm like, well, what do I do with this? And what is this? Or I see this. And, and so she, and she would just answer. And that's what I needed. I'm like, cause I just have to make sure I'm doing it right. Because yeah. that's my thing. If I'm going to do bookkeeping, I'm going to do it right. And like that, I still have that client today. 
<laughs> so like still have the client today. And, and oddly enough, this particular client I've never spoken to ever. Like we've never like met on Zoom. We've never done a phone call. All of our communication is in writing. I mean, it makes sense because she's a writer, but <laughs> I just, I just thought I always found that interesting because I was like, we, we don't even talk, but we but, can communicate, which, yeah. which was another big thing for me is making sure that I can communicate with clients and not just communicating as far as, you know, answering questions or helping them when, you know, when something comes up, but responding. Yeah. It's a, I think that's a big issue within the accounting industry is people are like reaching out to you and they're like, Hey, I reached out to my accountant, my bookkeeper. I haven't heard from them. And I'm like, Hmm, interesting. That's, that's very interesting. And that's also weird. You know, for me, I'm like, that's weird. Like, <laughs> like just, you just have to respond. But so that, so that, that's like, so I picked up uh, like a couple things, especially early on as far as how, like, what type of bookkeeper do I want to be? And what type of company do I want to create? Yeah. And if we kind of like go through like over the past couple of years, something that has been really, really helpful and what I've, what I've kind of learned is that, okay, so every business needs bookkeeping. Like it's not like, we know that every business needs bookkeeping and something that I've learned is that tax pros usually don't like bookkeeping, but they need bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, hmm, if I could be that bridge, you know, provide some really great bookkeeping, then they'll help me with my marketing because they'll just send people to me, which is what has happened. Like I have some tax preparers that I work with and, mm -hmm. and they will literally just send people my way. And I didn't, you know, I didn't have to do any, any, any like hardcore marketing. Yeah. They would, just, they would just send people my way. And I was like, ah, when I picked up on that, I was like, okay. So just like doing, doing really good bookkeeping because there's a lot of bookkeepers out there. Yes. But they're not all good. It's what right. I've learned. There are, there are some bad bookkeepers <laughs> yeah. because I've come behind some of them and I'm just like, wait, what was happening? And yeah. So like really that, I mean, that's, I mean, I try to be excellent in whatever I do, but I was like, if I'm going to be a bookkeeper, I'm going to be an excellent bookkeeper that way that if people will just send people my way, just based on the work that I've done, like, I don't have to really sell as far as, Hey, come to me because this, this, and this at the end of the day, people know that I, I do really great bookkeeping, which is what matters the most. Yeah. And then on top of that, you know, you can layer in like my personality and how I, you know, how I work with people and how I respond to people and all those things collectively has kind of led me to this point mm -hmm. where like today I, I currently have a wait list up because I'm at capacity, like for well, on what I can do on my own. I just recently hired my first team member because, you know, I've been doing this on my, cause you know. Me, I, I can do a lot of things. <laughs> I can, I was able to manage on my own. Plus I didn't want to throw people like just throw someone into something without me having some type of structure. Yeah. And I was really, I, I was really insistent upon at least having a structure that I can put, you know, bring them into, and then we can kind of modify and adjust. So that's where I am now is as far as starting to kind of build out a team because I'm like, okay, I, I, I'm limited. <laughs> I'm like, I can't duplicate myself. Mm -hmm. So what I can do is bring, start bringing in team members and, and I'm not even thinking of like, just, I don't want a huge team. That was never my goal. I want a small team, but bringing in people who maybe they don't have as much experience as I do, or maybe they're not, you know, the super bookkeeper, but some like they're willing to learn and they're yeah. willing to like grow and they, they really want, they feel passionate the same way that I do about helping business owners. And yeah. that's all I'm looking for. So when I can find those people, I can help and I can, I can show them like, this is what I do. These are some tips and tricks. This might help you 
to make them a better bookkeeper because yeah. I want, if, if I'm going to help anybody, I want them to be a good be- bookkeeper too. So that's, yeah. that's kind of where I am now. It's, it's been very interesting because I'm like, when I think back to 2020, like that first cleanup, it was a struggle because I didn't know what I was doing. And now I'm like, I love cleanups. Like I, I will do a cleanup and I'm like, you need me to come do it. I can do it. And I can do it very fast. If that's, that's the thing. What took me probably like, I don't even know how long it took me to do that cleanup back then, but like today in today's time, depending on the level of complexity, although I think most of it is very simple and easy. Like I can do a cleanup sometimes in the same day. Like I can Mm -hmm. sit down and knock it out in a few hours or like within a week or something. So versus like taking months and months. Cause I, I always thought that was weird too. When people are like, yes, it's going to take like two, three months to clean up books. And I'm like, why? Like, <laughs> like yeah. why, why is it taking that long to, especially considering if they're already behind, like we want to get it cleaned up as quickly as possible so we can get them on track. Yeah. And yeah, that's been, that's, yeah, that's been, it's been interesting just to kind of see how I've evolved and like, how efficient I've become as well. So, yeah. Yeah. So how do you structure, actually, I want to go back real quick to one thing you were talking about, about figuring out that if I just do good bookkeeping, tax preparers will just send people my way. The key component there is like, I, I feel like a lot of bookkeepers are like, I'm a really like, and they are, they're really good bookkeepers, but they're like the best kept secret. And mm-hmm. so the difference is that you actually went out and had the conversations and built the relationships with the people that would be sending you clients, right? So don't yeah. be the best kept secret. You still mm-hmm. have to go and do some action to yes. let people know that you're good and then you can prove yourself. But that was definitely a key key component in that because you could be the best kept secret and still not have any clients. We'll be back after a quick break. This episode of the Ambitious Bookkeeper podcast is sponsored by my brand new free training, The Ultimate Guide to Creating a Profitable Bookkeeping Business. In just one hour, you will learn three keys to creating and launching a profitable bookkeeping business. We will map out your path to creating a bookkeeping or accounting business that keeps you in control of your time, priorities, and expertise from someone who built a six-figure firm on part-time hours. That's right. You can stay in control of your time, keep family as your priority, and serve your clients well. It just takes a little strategy up front, and I'm going to help you with that during this free training. So head over to the show notes to sign up now for the next training and find out how you can choose the work you do, kick imposter syndrome to the curb, use tech to be super efficient, which all leads to a profitable business. Just head on over to ambitiousbookkeeper.com slash training, and I will see you there. That is, that's true. And well, and I guess because that kind of goes back to, you know, me and my utilizing my creativity. So I, I, I thoroughly enjoy creating content and putting it out there. Like I try to think of, you know, fun and cool. That's that's what I like to say. I'm like, I want bookkeeping to be fun. So I'm like, I try to think of fun and different ways to approach the same boring topics to, to bring in those people who it's not clicking with. Like maybe that, you know, telling them, Hey, separate your business account. They're just like, well, whatever. But when you break it down and you're like, this is why you need to do it. This is what like, but where it makes sense to them that has been helpful too, just so I can kind of see what, like, what are people really looking for? But like tax preparers, when they see that too, they're like, hmm, like this person knows what they're talking about. And they, this might be someone I would want to send people to. And that's like the, a couple of the tax preparers that I do work with today, we connected through Instagram. Like, you know, they would see my content or, or like, we you know, we started following each other either just based on, you know, finding someone on, you know, on this Instagram or like they had a client that I started working with. And so it's, you know, it's just, it's a whole circle. And that's what, and I, that's what I, I was putting out content. Like I, I was very, very adamant about like making sure I put stuff out and, you know, 
be very consistent as far as having stuff out there. And last year, I wasn't putting out much content at all because I was like super busy. <laughs> I was like, I was super, super busy. And I was like, oh, okay. Like I, I couldn't keep up with what I was doing at the time. But mm-hmm. the fact that I had already, part of the reason I was busy is because I had already connected with people and had those connections and they were just sending people to me. So I'm like, I didn't need to push as much versus then I was just like, let me just put stuff out and like really show that I'm here so that they know I'm here. And now I'm back to like trying to be consistent because I'm like this year, I was like, marketing is my big focus because we should always be marketing. So, so I'm like, <laughs> easier now, said than done. <laughs> yes. And, and I'm like, and that's why I was like, okay, I do need help in the marketing, like, you know, sending out emails and yeah. creating blogs and cause these are all marketing tools, but I'm like, I'm not fully utilizing everything. So I'm like, I need a little help. <laughs> so, so I got help in those areas mm-hmm. and now it's, it's easier. It's been, it's been so much easier to not even just create content, but like, have some type of marketing plan, it's been easier. And I have, I'll have people like respond, like respond to me on my email list when they're like, when they're ready, they're like, Hey, I've been following you or I've been watching you and I I'm ready to do this. And I'm like, it's awesome. Like it just shows that it works because sometimes Mm -hmm. you're like, I'm sending out these emails or I'm posting these things and it doesn't feel like it's working, but people are, they're definitely watching because a lot of my clients that have come to me, they were, they were sitting back watching me. And I mean, I didn't, you know, I didn't really know. Cause I'm like, I never paid attention to like, you know, who was like common. I've never tracked. I'm going to try to do better now, but I never really tracked all that stuff. I was just like, let me put the stuff out there and make sure it's available to people who need it. Yeah. But a lot of clients, they'll come to me. They're like, yeah, I've been following you. And I love what you put out there. And I love, you know, your vibe and this and that. And I'm like, that's what they're connecting to because yeah. They don't know you, honestly. Like I have none of my clients or people that I know. I have never worked with anyone that I I know personally. It's all been like they found me or I found them through something or they were referred to me. So it's 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 encouraging for me just because by the time they do come to me, depending on what service they're looking for, they're ready. Like they're like, here and they're like they'll just give me all the things because I'm like yeah. most people that's hard to be like yeah. I have to you know share my pain game from you know like I have to give you access to this I have to ugh, like that's hard but most they're like here you go like what do you need and they like take it and that's that's awesome for me because I'm like yes give me all the things so I can do my job but do you think <laughs> do you think that has to do with your marketing content like are you putting out content about what's expected of them or is it more about like they come already trusting you they, they come already trusting me. Well, cause that's the thing. I don't, I don't think I've ever really put out like marketing content as far as like, this is like, this is what, you know, you need, you need to do as a client. Although now you're giving me ideas. So I'm going to have to add it's that top <laughs> of mind for me because I've been creating something along those lines. <laughs> and, but I think it's just like, I do feel like they, they feel like they can come to me and trust me. And yeah. that's a big thing for me because I'm like, I do want you to trust me because there are a lot of stories that I hear and I'm just like, it like makes me sad because I'm like, they're like, yeah, I had, you know, a bookkeeper or someone was doing this and, and yeah, they said they were doing it and then something was wrong. And then now I have a a huge tax bill or something. And I'm just like, when I hear stuff like that, I'm like, (laughs) like, that's because it's unfortunate and it, and it, cause it could also be avoided. And so that's why a big part of what I do not just with content, but a part of like my mission is to make sure that business owners are equipped with the right information. They can find the resources. They can get those answers that they need so that they can, they can be a little bit more confident when it comes to their numbers. So when, so whether that's their, whether that's STEM DIY, which I'm a hundred percent a proponent of, I'm like, get in there, understand what's happening and understand what you're handing off. Mm-hmm. And then, then when they get to the point where they're like, okay, I'm hiring a bookkeeper, they're not just blindly handing their stuff over. They're not just saying, oh, here you go. And like, I'm done. It's okay. I'm handing this off, but I can also provide a little oversight. So mm-hmm. like when you're looking at your reports or you're looking at something, you're like, 
this doesn't look right. You can question them. Like, I think a lot of business owners don't feel like they have like that level of confidence to be like, something looks wrong or yeah. I don't know, like, I don't know, or even feeling comfortable enough to ask the question. And I'm like, if you can't ask, like, if you can't ask your bookkeeper a question, that's a problem because yeah. y'all are literally in this potentially long-term relationship and they are, they are in there. We're all in their business. Like we know everything. Like they can't, they can't lie to us. Like we know. Yeah. <laughs> can't hide anything. <laughs> you can't deny it. So it's like, you want to have that relationship where it's like, okay, yes. Like, like we're essentially friends. Like, okay. Like what's going on? I like, I, I don't ever make them feel bad about anything. And I'm like, just like, like, what is like, what is this transaction for? Like, that's you know, like, it's not, I'm judging you for buying something. It's like, what's going on? So I can understand what's happening. Like mm -hmm. you have something going on in your business that, you know, you're making investments for this or whatever the case is, but I want them to feel a hundred percent comfortable to come to me and ask, like, ask me first before they just go do something crazy or things are just like completely out of whack. And I don't know anything about it. That's, that's the relationship that I like to have with yeah. my clients. It's, and, and they know they send me an email. Like I love email. So I'm like, send me an email and I can, I will answer your question because I want you to make sure you have the right answer. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'll go find the answer. And that's the thing. I'll go find the answer for you. Like I will ask whoever I need to ask or go do the research so I can come back with an accurate answer and not yeah. just something that you see online or made up. Yeah. I think that's something really important to touch on because I, I feel like there's definitely some of us out there that like in theory, we want to be able to provide that for clients, but then we like, some of us might not have like correct boundaries and then just kind of like get taken advantage of, or maybe we don't actually have the time to do that for clients and provide that level of service. So it's really important to like one, build that into your pricing and talk about it like with clients that you can bring whatever to me. And that's why I'm a little more expensive because I'm willing to do the research and have the conversations. And for that, I need to be able to have time in my calendar for it. So that means I have to take on less clients, but if you want that level of service, then here I am versus promise, like over promising and not being able to deliver that. I just, yeah, I see it happen. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All the time. Like it happens more, more often than we probably realize. And I'm like, now that I know that I'm like, okay, I know, I know what I want to provide to my clients. And yeah. I mean, it, it comes from just, I mean, I've always been that way in general. Like one of my first jobs was I worked as a customer support rep. Like, so I was on the phone, like I was a call center person on the mm -hmm. phone, answering email. So I'm like a lot of that like it still sticks with me. So I'm like service, like providing good customer service is like so, so important because one is lacking just in the industry as a whole. Yeah. And I know how I would want to feel. So that's, I try to give people what I want to feel. And yeah, if I want good service, I put out good service and, you know, treat everyone with kindness. So that's, that's a big thing for me just because I'm like, yes, I'm, you know, a numbers nerd and I like to I like to be left alone and, you know, kind of just do my own thing. But I'm like, when I do interact with people, I make sure that that interaction is pleasurable and yeah. something that, something that they're going to remember because nine times out of 10, they will remember that experience because they probably had 10 other bad experiences. So, yeah, that's so, that's so important to like, to be intentional. I think I know a lot of us have to actually go out of our way to be intentional about that because it's so easy, easy for accountants personality to just like, keep your head down. Don't talk mm -hmm. to people, wait until somebody requests something to communicate. And you will totally set yourself apart. If you just keep people up to date without them asking, mm -hmm. even if you feel like you're behind, like I've yeah. had to do that recently where I'm like, I'm so nervous about telling the client that like, I'm actually behind, but I know it needs to be done because mm -hmm. the worst thing I, I mean, I would prefer someone just communicate to me if they're behind rather than me, you know, finding out that something just wasn't done 
with no communication. Like Mm -hmm. I'm okay with things being late. If I know that like my clients, the same thing. Oh no. My internet went out. (laughs) Crap. I don't know what, if any of that was caught, I don't know what's going on with my internet, but um, I'll just have to edit that out, I guess. But yeah. So I don't know. What was the last part you heard? And I can backtrack. (laughs) I know I was talking about, like, I've had to recently reach out to clients and let them know that something was, you know, I'm still working on this. This is the status. It's going to be a little further behind than I anticipated once I got in there or whatever, or like just being upfront and honest, like I have personal stuff going on. I, Mm -hmm. you know, I know I, I promised it by this date, but I just wanted to communicate with you. So you are aware of the situation. And most of the time they're just like grateful that I communicated, right. (laughs) They're okay with it being late. What is going on with my internet? Did I lose you? (laughs) Dang it. (laughs) This time I stopped talking when I realized you froze. So, okay. Ian, you're just going to have to cut cut that section out. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what's up with my internet lately. It's been like very spotty, but all right. So you are now at this point in your journey where you have really honed in what the type of bookkeeper and the type of business that you want to have out in the world. And it doesn't necessarily include an industry. It's more about the level of customer service you're providing, which is completely setting you apart because not only you are, not only are you doing very stellar bookkeeping and showing that to the tax preparers that you work with, but you're also showing the tax preparers how your level of communication with the clients and you're keeping their clients super happy. So they're, it's just like a no brainer to continue to send you, to send you people. Mm -hmm. So you now have a wait list. Let's backtrack a little bit too, in case no one is aware of the other case studies I've put out on you, but you quit your corporate job like a year ago, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that. So I quit in 2021. Wait. Oh, so like two years ago. Was it 21? Yes, it was 21. I'm thinking of the timeline. Because at the same time, I also decided to get a divorce. So yes, a lot of things were happening in 2021. And because, you know, like, and this was all happening at the same time. So like I had decided, oh, I'm going to go all in because company I was working for, they were forcing people back into the office. And I was like, that is crazy because we have been fine. And I was like, okay, I think I can do this. Cause I'm like, I picked up some clients. So I'm like, I can, I can do this. And initially I was hoping to have a little bit of support to be able to, you know, Hey, have somebody to kind of lean on as I, you know, kind of transition, but that wasn't the case. So it's been me, like I've been back here figuring it out with my daughter. So I'm like, it's, it's been interesting. Like I've had to, you know, kind of start over essentially, like, you know, you're building, you're building something with someone and now, okay, not only did I decide to just kind of like quit my job that I was working, but now I'm trying to grow a business and I'm trying to figure all this stuff out and be a mom. And it was a lot. It it was definitely a lot, but most people probably wouldn't even know if you, if you can, if you see what, if you go back and look, probably wouldn't be able to tell because I'm like I was putting out content I was like showing up I was being there I was being present for my clients so I made sure that I still did what I needed to do to make sure that I could you know help to continue to grow my business because I said I'm not going to anybody's office and that's just I'm not doing that like I I can't even imagine now going to going to an office I'm like I'm at home all day and it's wonderful I love to be at home and like go, going and sitting in car line is like, it's hard. <laughs> so I'm mm-hmm. like, why? I'm like, can you just drive? <laughs> yeah, so, you realize how much time yeah. is wasted during commuting and like yeah. chat in the office. It's just, it's like the same as public school. Like how much time is wasted just getting from point A to point B between exactly. classes and yeah. 
yeah yeah it's so it's it's been wonderful just to be be at home and not have to like I stay within like, like I'd say probably like a five to ten mile radius like I don't go far everything I need is is very close by and so it's it's been great and it's just and it's also been just encouraging to know that I'm like I can like I was able to do it and like although you know like corporate makes you think you know you you know you need to come into the office and you need to do this job and you need to do this and that and it's like no I think I can do it on my own <laughs> because part of part of the issue with corporate for me was you know I was trying to work my way up that was you know I was doing what you're supposed to do you know you check all the boxes you climb that ladder you do all these things and I I was was literally doing that. Like I was working my way up and I got to a point where I was like, I wanted another promotion. And cause I'm like, I was a supervisor and I was like, okay, manager, that's the next level. Let's go. And the person at the time, they couldn't really give me a reason why they didn't want, they didn't really want me to have the role. They told me I wasn't qualified. And I was just like, Hmm, interesting. Because I'm like, I've literally put in all this time and effort and like, I've checked all the boxes and like, even they agree. They're like, yeah, you checked all the boxes in it. But yeah, we just, I just don't think you're qualified. And I thought it was interesting that the person that they brought in was someone didn't even have an accounting background. Like it was like a history or something. It was something very off, like off the wall that had nothing to do with accounting. And then they wanted me to train them. And I was like, yeah. So if I'm good enough to train this new person, because obviously I have the knowledge and the information that you need, why am I not qualified for that role? And yeah, that's, that's when I was just like, okay, I, I see. I understand now. Like you, you want the, like the good workers, you want them to like literally sit there and be the good workers and help to cover, cover the managers and other leaders cover their butt because mm -hmm. they don't really know what's going on. They don't know what's happening but you have someone like in the trenches doing the things and catching all the mistakes and errors and issues. And you don't want that person to really elevate because then you're going to lose that. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. I'm like, that's okay. I'm like, I can yeah. create my own company and I can do whatever I want to do. And I can, you know, I, when that, whenever I want to make a decision, I can just make that decision. I don't have to run it by anyone. I don't have to get their approval. I don't have to, you know, you know, try to fight to say, oh, we should do this because I have all these great ideas because I'm in it. Like I'm sitting here in it doing it. So I understand better than someone who's sitting in an office and in the meetings all day. So yeah, that was, that was kind of like my eye-opening moment. Like, cause it, it was, it's pretty much just been, you know, it's, it's kind of like just rolled off from that, like from that, ex from that experience, it just kind of continued. And cause yeah. like after that I left, like, I had been with the company for like 10 years. Like I was wow. literally, yeah, I was worried. I was telling you, I was doing what they say you're supposed to do. After that, I was like, oh no. And I knew I made the right decision because when I, when I put in my notice, like that person, you know, that guy, that's that senior manager who told me that I, well, no, senior director, I think he was like, he had a high, high title. He didn't even speak to me. Like, mm -hmm. like the last two weeks, he didn't even speak to me. Because like he was he was upset that I decided to leave and didn't want to stick to his plan that he had. So I was like, hmm, that's hmm, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's so unfortunate that that kind of stuff is able to happen in, in corporate environments because if he had given you the chance to step into that role, you could have created multiple use in the position where you were like you could have mentored people to be as good as you were in that role and that's just so unfortunate that a lot of people can't see that like mm -hmm. yeah yes we would love to keep the same person in the same role if they're doing a stellar job but that's not going to keep th their their attention <laughs> like yeah. those really good a team members are not going to keep, it's not going to keep their attention in that role because they're always going to be hungry for more. So let them be hungry for more, let them move up, let them build the team beneath them and create more of them. Right. Like, and you have to let, uh, you have to let people make mistakes too. Like, exactly. yeah. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm like that, that's on like, 
I'm like, now I have that opportunity to create a team of my own. So I'm like, I can pick who I want to pick. I can like, I can find like the right matches for what I'm looking for. So it's like, no, you don't have to be, you know, super bookkeeper today, but we'll get you there. Like Mm -hmm. I will work with you. I will help you. I will, I will get you to wherever you're trying to go. So if if that's your goal, you want to be a super bookkeeper. Great. I can help you do that. If you, whatever it is you want to do, I want to be able to help in those ways because I'm like, I can't duplicate myself, unfortunately. (laughs) So I'm like, if I can at least share what I know and what I have with other people, that's, that will probably be so beneficial because most people probably aren't telling you things that I'll tell you because I'm telling you from my viewpoint and my experience versus what you might go read online. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. I think a lot of people get really afraid of hiring because one, they they don't want people to come in like, and know more than them, which you have to let go of that. Like in the end, I think you want your team to know more than you. You want mm-hmm. them to be able to handle things without you having to double check everything for one, but for two, like we forget that exactly what you said, like, this is your opportunity to actually create the team environment that you always wanted. And it's your opportunity to imp- like to transfer your knowledge to somebody. And we don't have to like keep that under lock and key or behind. There's another cliche that I'm like <laughs> trying to think of, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no reason to do that. That's just going to hinder our industry as a whole. So yeah, we have to change our mindset around hiring and, and all that. And it's hard. Like you're, you're going to have hard conversations. There's going to be difficult times. You're going to have to give critical feedback to people and that's just part of it. But yeah, that's it. Cause that was always my thing. I'm just like, ugh. thinking, of, thinking about hiring was, was scary for me because I was like, I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm like, I know how people are. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm like, like it's hard like it really like that's that's the hardest piece I mean that's the hardest part about life in general is dealing with people because we're all different and when you're thinking about I want to bring someone in to help you know help me build or help me create the company that I'm trying to you know that I envision like finding the right people is important because the right people will make the difference and it's just true like the right people will make the difference but finding those people that's the hard part and so, and so I will say like this person found me. So that's also like, that kind of goes back to like, I made sure that you can find me just about anywhere. Like if you probably Google me, you will probably find something like mm-hmm. you will find me one way or another. So they actually find, found me on, on a website that I was like, I'm on a directory and they found me on there and they sent me an email and they were like, Hey, you know, I get a lot of emails where people, you know, people will just like send resumes and send, re- and I'm just like, I didn't even say I was hiring, like, this is so random, but like, like that email, it stuck out to me because she, one, she found me, you know, somewhere she told me where she found me. And she actually took the time to kind of read, you know, write an email that wasn't just kind of like, Hey, Hey, hire me. Here's my resume. But like, Hey, can we have a conversation? If you, you know, if you do have an opening, I would love to be considered. Like it made it, it was wonderful for me. Cause I didn't have to go look for someone. <laughs> so like yeah. it took all of that out of it. But then also like when we, when we talk, then we're like, we're on the same page. And then also I'm like, oh, she can not just help me on the bookkeeping side. She can also help me on the marketing side. So I'm like, ah, I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of bang for my buck because it's like, I can have, she can, she can perform multiple roles. And I'm like, she can do the things that I'm like, I've been putting off because it's harder for me. Like I could probably do it. Yes. But I'm like, it's hard compared to when she's like, oh, here you, oh, like I took all your ideas and here, like I've written all these email newsletters. I've, I've written all these blog and I'm just like, wow. Okay. <laughs> all I have to do is like read them and make sure, you know, like, yeah, just double, you know, I'm like, that's wonderful. And like, that's helped me because I'm like, now I have things planned out versus like, oh, I'm like, I really want to like send emails. I really want to write blogs. I really want to make sure I'm, you know, marketing consistently. And I'm like, that alone has saved me so much time because I'm mm-hmm. like, I didn't have to think about it. Like all, all I did is because I collect ideas because 
I get I have, I have lots so, and lots of notebooks full of ideas too. <laughs> oh, and and I see now I, now I actually have a, a real process. Well, I have a process for collecting my ideas so that they're in one organized. place and they're organized. <laughs> and like like when she saw all my ideas, she was like, "Oh my goodness, you have a lot of ideas!" And I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> I'm like, they're just sitting here and I need to do something with them. So like, she's literally able to just take all the things that I've been thinking about, or, you know, I'm like, oh, I really want to put something, you know, something out about this. And she can literally just take that and create an email, create a blog. And I'm just like, that is just taking so much off of me because now I'm like, you know, I do the social media part. Cause I'm like, I like, actually like it. Like I like creating like fun. And there's also, you know, I will also tell people there are options out there too to help you with that. Because mm-hmm. there, there are a couple like really, really good companies that'll that are specific for like accountants and bookkeepers. So I'm like, mm-hmm. there are options. So you don't have to just, you know, not do it. Like yeah. the best thing to do is make sure that people can find you. How like however that looks. And that was my goal. I said, you're gonna find me one way or another, you're going to find me. I'm gonna be everywhere. And you're going to find me. And that's, that's what has happened. And what has benefited me is like, people can find me. Yeah. And if they can't find you, it's, it's not going to be helpful at all. So, yeah. And also once they find you, you respond. <laughs> that is true. That, that is very true. Yes. You respond because yes, I, I, I don't know if I can count how many times people have said, oh, well, yeah, I reached out to, you know, I've been trying to reach out to like some bookkeepers or accountants and I just never heard back. And I'm like, hmm, like if I don't respond, it's because I don't want to. And yeah. I'm like I have, I have every right to do that now because I'm like, you know what? It's like, it's, cause there have been a lot of, there's been like some interactions that I would have. And I'm just like, mm, that doesn't even feel right. I'm like, I'm not even gonna, I'm yeah. not even gonna bother with that. It's that's a no for me. Yeah. (laughs) The only things I don't respond to are the ones that look like clear spam where it's like, here's my, my tax returns from last year. Can you take a look? I'm like, "Mm, don't do taxes. So this is definitely a phishing scam. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or or like, or like not even making it personable. Like, yeah. Like, why are you emailing me? Like, you know, like if you're sending me a message, like make me want to read it. Like, yeah. Hey, I, you know, I heard you on this or I saw this. I saw you posted this. I saw something like help me connect the dots because I'm like, otherwise you're just some random person that came out of nowhere. And I do not respond to those people. So (laughs) yeah, if I don't know how you came to me, I do not respond. But if you, you can give me something, yeah, I'll definitely respond. So yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so you mentioned a minute ago that you have a process for collecting ideas. And I would love for you to share that since like now we, oh, we have something very actionable and tactical that people can get behind and, and implement for themselves. Too. So I will tell you, I will tell you where I got it from as well. So I follow, so she's, she's a, she's a marketing person. Um, her it's Brittany Gardner. She even has a podcast. It's, it's the like, know, and trust show. I was following her for a while because I just really liked her approach to marketing because I'm like anybody that approaches any like topic in like a different way or have a different like perspective, I'm always drawn to those people. So I was like, I was following her and she has, she has, she has a few different options, but one of the key pieces that I took from it was, so I use ClickUp and I have it set to where when I have ideas, one, I capture it immediately. So whether that's I can take a note in my phone or a voice note, those have been helpful because I talk faster than I can write. So I'm like, mm-hmm. take a quick voice note and then I can send it over to ClickUp. So like I can take that voice note, send it in an email, like email it to ClickUp. It'll go right to my to that my my content ideas list, and they're all sitting there. And then. From there, I can go in and like I kind of put them into their necessary like buckets and then add any additional information that I need to, but at least I've captured it. Cause I'm like, sometimes I'm like an idea will pop up. So I pull up my phone and I'm like, I say, like I'll like I'll record it and then I send it and I'm like, it's there, it's captured because mm-hmm. I I have I would have so many ideas and then I'd forget because I'm like, oh, that was a good idea, but I just forgot what it was. Mm-hmm. So it's it's all day. I will literally 
pull out my phone or like write something down or make sure I add it immediately to like my ideas list. Mm -hmm. And that's where all my ideas live. And so then, so then my team member who's helping with like my emails and my blogs, she can go in there and see all my ideas. And then, so she can literally just kind of pull from there and like, okay, what do you want to talk about this month? And she can literally just go in because I probably have something that's going to align with whatever we're, we're trying to, you know, market for that month. Mm -hmm. And it's been great. It's, I mean, I like, I like click up, you know, I like a lot of things, but it has been so easy to collect those ideas because I realized just how much, how much I was holding in my head yeah. <laughs> and getting it out and like putting it somewhere because sometimes I can come back to something and be like, Hmm, I'm not sure where I was going with it. Like then, but I'm like, let me like, now that I kind of sat, sat a little bit and I can really put something behind it as far as how I want to present it or what type of content I want to put out. Yeah. That's so, that's, so helpful. Yeah. yeah. I yes. do something similar. We, I use notion for, I, for the ideas, but yeah, that's what I go back to whenever I'm like, okay, I need a, I, I have a slot for a solo episode. Cause we, you know, we've used all our interviews or whatever. I, schedule things out. And so I just sit down and look at those ideas and see which one I'm like, which one can I jam on for 15 minutes? <laughs> yeah. And that's how solo episodes are born. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, and I think that's so important too, because I think, especially as bookkeepers and accountants in our industry, there's nothing special. Like, like it is what it is. Like the information is it's the same, like there's really nothing that makes it different. So for each of us, it's helpful to kind of put our spin or perspective on it mm -hmm. because I'm like, I can take something and just kind of like twist it just a little bit. And I'm like, it's the same thing that this other person said, but I just put the little Misa spin on it. And yeah. it probably will resonate with people differently because, you know, I put that spin on it versus the IRS says to do this. Like, we know that, like that information is out there, but how are you going to make it, you know, fun or exciting or where people even care? Like, yeah, like they don't care. But when you're yeah. like, hey, this affects you because if you don't do this, you know, but not making it where, you know, you're not trying to scare people off. Like, that's also something that, you know, I try to, <laughs> I don't want people to feel like scared because it's not, it's not scary. Like yeah. the IRS is not a scary place. No one's coming to get you. Like it's not really like that. And I don't like when people put things out that way because yeah, it's, it's really not, it's, it should be easy. It should be, you should be calm. You shouldn't be stressed out. And that's usually what I try to come across to give to people. Yeah. That's so helpful. Yeah. And just like you said, putting your own perspective, your own spin on it, applying it to your own type of clients and, and making it relatable and understandable to people. I think that's like one of the biggest compliments I've gotten from my clients and other, you know, other groups I speak in front of is that like, you just break things down to be so like, so simple so that I can understand it because everyone has this, like this, I cannot figure out my words today, but like this expectation that all accountants are like suit and tie, um, going to judge you, make you feel stupid for not understanding. And when we can show up and break down that barrier for people, it's going to, it's going to make such a huge difference. So like, if you take one thing away in making in setting yourself apart, it, let it be that like it's really hard, especially if you came from a CPA firm or you came from corporate and you're used to working with corporate clients or whatever, it is a very hard transition to make. And you will feel very stupid <laughs> initially. You'll be like, I feel so dumb, but like, also I want people, like I want clients to be comfortable with me. So we're trying to work with much smaller businesses than the corporate clients. They don't know the same jargon. They don't understand. Mm -hmm. They don't have that base level of knowledge. They didn't go to business school. They are creatives. They are photographers. They are restaurant owners. Lots of them may not have even gone to college. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you've got to kind of put yourself in their shoes. I always like to relate it to like, 
explaining it to maybe a level of fourth grade or middle schooler, right. Of like, you don't, it's not necessarily dumbing it down, but it also helps me like realize, okay, how can I explain this in a way that anyone can understand no matter what their level. And if someone feels like I'm dumbing it down, then they're not my client. Like if they're yeah. too smart for that, then that's fine. It, exactly. Exactly. Those aren't, those aren't my people. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Cause like, even with that, like something I always try to keep in mind is that, you know, we're all individuals. So like we all learn differently and take in information, information differently. So like, sometimes I try to present things just visually, like sometimes mm -hmm. like, I don't even have to say it. Like if they see like a picture of something and it's showing this concept visually, that will probably connect with them better than just some words on a page. Yeah. And like, so I try to keep that in mind is that maybe saying it this way doesn't work, but maybe if you demonstrate it, because for some people that's more helpful. And like, that's why one of, one of the services I have, so I have a bookkeeping intensive where I literally, we get on a two hour call and we're going to, we walk through QuickBooks. Like I show them, I'm like, if you take these steps, I'm like, don't click all the buttons, do these certain things. And you can, you can DIY your book. Books and everyone that I work with, they're just like, this was so helpful. They're like, like you explain, you know, you explained it. It was so simple to understand. And I'm like, I can refer to the, to the recording and it, it has been so helpful and I've been able to keep up with my books. And I'm like, that's what I want to hear because I'm not trying to take away any bookkeeping work, but I'm like, I want to prepare them for when they get ready to hire a bookkeeper. So when they're like, okay, I've been managing my books. I'm to the point I can't do it. I'm going to hand it off. You're going to get a clean set of books. Like, and they also know what's going on. So it's not, yeah. it's not just, oh, here you go. I don't, I have no idea what's happening in my business. No, they can say, oh, here are my books. This is what's been happening. This is what I've been doing. This is what you'll see because that's what I want business owners to be able to do. I don't, I don't want them to just be completely blind. I want them to understand what's going on and also see the importance and the value in a bookkeeper because I know for a fact, most people don't think they were valuable. They're just like, eh, you know, they enter stuff into, you know, software or they, you know, yeah. state data entry. And, and I'm like, it is so much more than just what they think it is. It's so much more than just categorizing. It's so much more. Well, no one reconciles. So I can't even say that. Most, <laughs> most people don't even reconcile. So it's like, it's so much more to it than just what they think it is. So yeah. like one, letting them understand what, like, what it really is and what it means for their business. Because I don't think people really understand. They're just like, oh yeah, I'll do it for taxes. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, you need it for more than just taxes. It's going to help for taxes, but- you need it for more than that. So that's, yeah, that's a big goal is like really, really showing people that bookkeeping is awesome. Bookkeeping is fun and it's, it's very important. So that's, that's where I stand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you mind sharing? I have two questions around your bookkeeping intensives. One, at what point did you get to where you felt comfortable doing these? Because I've I've worked with other bookkeepers that they're like, oh, I, I want to do something like that, but I'm so nervous that I'll get on the call and not really know like what to cover. So what, at what point were you, did you start be, becoming comfortable doing those? When I, once I had like my process, as far as like, what is my bookkeeping process? And I like, I had it down. Like, I'm like, these are the steps that I know I take every month with clients that I'm working on. And then I know I can turn around and show it to someone else. So it's, it's literally the same steps. Every single time I show them the same things. I'm like, start here, go here, because that's also how I operate. I'm like, I can't have it doing 50 million things. I'm like, we're going to have the same concepts and the same steps every single time. And what I do also is like upfront, I will like look at their books, see if there's any issues, see if there's things we need to talk about specifically for their books. And then I also make sure that it's set up correct. So I do a little front end work just to make okay. sure someone has touched the books and made sure that it's right. And mm -hmm. then when we get in there and then I explain it, like I even go through and I, I talk about the chart of accounts and I'm just like, this is what this is. Like, this is what this means. This is, this is what, what you're seeing. And this is how it connect, like connects to your reports. So like really breaking down what they're seeing when they log in 
and then showing them just take these steps. Like do not click on the 50 million buttons that are in there because I'm like, it's a lot. It can be overwhelming. But once you know, just like these are the places that you need to go and these are the things you need to do, it makes it better and easier for them. Mm-hmm. And they feel and they feel more confident to be able to do it, which is what which is the goal. I want them to be confident so that, you know, as they're doing it, they're not just in there making a mess. They're yeah. doing it correctly. And then I also give them access to me. So I'm like, after the intensive, like they have a recording, any resources or anything, and like kind of like a quick, a quick guide of like, you know, these are the steps to take. But then I also give them access to me. At first, I started with three months, but then I changed it to six months because I'm like, I realized they can't, people would come to me later. So I was like, let's do six months. Most people, they don't ask a lot of questions. It, these are questions that I can literally ask, answer in like two seconds. So it's like, if they do have a question, they'll like send me like, okay, I ran into this issue because, you know, you know, things come up or maybe it's not something we saw like while we were going through it. And then I can give them an answer. So then that question is answered. So now they know how to handle it. And I like, I didn't get a lot of questions, like maybe one or two, like when, like after the intensive, I might get maybe one or two from the, from that person afterwards. But other than that, they were good to go. And then the feedback that I get from them is they're just like, this was so helpful. And this is, this is great. And I'm like, I like, I'm happy to like actually understand what I'm doing and how to use this. And that's, that's the goal. So. Yeah. I love that. Okay. My second question now, then are you comfortable sharing with the audience? What price point you started at and where it's at now with that, that intensive? Cause I know things always change now that so you with, added six months and all the things. So with the intensive, I started it at 750, which I'm like, when it comes to price, I just kind of like, I go with how I feel. That's how mm-hmm. most things I go with how I feel. So I started at 750. I'm like, that's pretty, you know, I think that's pretty manageable. So since then I've doubled that. So I have it, at, you know, of course extended, you know, their support. And then also I was just like, this is just very valuable because I'm like, they're essentially getting your entire process. <laughs> yeah. They're getting my entire process and they're also getting access to me, mm-hmm. which is which is probably rare, like to be able to, you know, like get into the brain of an actual bookkeeper. Like, I think that is like so valuable because that's what the business owners need, especially, especially in the early stages. Like there's so much confusion when it comes to bookkeeping. And so I'm like, if I can help to make it less confusing and make you feel a little bit more comfortable. So Mm -hmm. when you, you know, because ideally I want your business to grow. I want you to get to the point where you can hire a bookkeeper, but then, and then that's also, they can come back around. You never know because I've had that happen where I was going to say how many people have converted after that. We've, we've done it, you know, we've done an intensive and they're like, oh yeah, it's, this is great. I mean, and of course it depends on the person because some people are like, you know, I'm good. I can handle it. And there's some people are like, okay, this is good. I learned it, but I'm more than I expected. (laughs) Yeah. It's more than I expected. So it it works. It works two ways. And so they they can come back around. They're like, okay, please help me. Like, I need you to do this because I can't. And that was part of the goal as well. Because I'm like, I really want people to understand that bookkeeping is, I'm like, I don't play games when it comes to bookkeeping. Like it's, it's, it's serious in, in the, in the matter of it's important and you're dealing with your numbers and you want it done right because it has other implications. Like if your books are wrong, like you're using incorrect information to make plans or make goals or file your taxes. Like Mm -hmm. you want to make sure you have the right information and it all starts with bookkeeping. So yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like to talk about how like that's where I usually kind of lean towards is like, really, really helping build that bookkeeping foundation. And like, for me, like I just do bookkeeping. I'm like, I don't do taxes. I don't do like two, like, I don't do like other like high level services or anything like that. I'm like, I'm not trying to do CFOs. Like I'm really focused on getting that foundation in place. And I'm like, when you're ready to add that stuff on, by all means, that's wonderful. That means you're growing. But I'm like, if you don't even start here, 
you can't get up to those levels. Yeah. And that's what I really want people to understand too, is that you can get there. If you, you know, if you think it sounds wonderful to say, I have a CFO, that's wonderful, but you have to work your way up there. It's not something that you can just do because, you know, they need good bookkeeping and it, that's where it all starts. So just that's, I've really, really honed in on, I'm like, I just want to do good bookkeeping work and let people know the importance of it so that they can build that foundation from the beginning versus two, three, four, five years down the line. And they're like, like, I haven't been doing anything. My stuff is a mess. And now they have to kind of like go back and like fix things or get things corrected. And, and there's like, so many bad habits in place at that point. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm currently in the midst of a very disastrous cleanup with a multi-million dollar company that just has not been handling things correctly Two companies and they've been very in- intermingled and it's just really bad habits going back and forth. Mm-hmm. And it was all because they couldn't, it, it was a cash flow thing. And so they started intermingling things, paying for one thing on the other company. And it's like, that never would have happened if you had good bookkeeping from the beginning there wouldn't have been mm-hmm. the cash flow issues because it would have been caught mm-hmm. before it became a problem. Exactly. <laughs> so. Yeah, so, so, so yeah, that, that's my goal. That's, that's really, that's where I live and that's where I find happiness. It's like, right. Cause I'm like there, I, I just feel like, cause there's a, there's a gap. Like you have, you know, you have people who are starting businesses and they're in the early stages. And those are the people who probably need the most help because they don't know what's going on. They don't, they don't know what's happening. The ones who are more seasoned in their business, now they can have issues of their own. Like, like you said, like they can have their own stuff going on, but they usually already have the support by that time. Like yeah. by the time they're now, I can't tell you what type of support it is, but they have some, they have some support. But the ones early on, they don't have like any good support because usually, you know, I guess to most bookkeepers or accountants, it's like, it's not worth it to them. You know, like, eh, they're, you know, they're a new business, like they're not really making much there, but it's like, they have that potential, but if they get the right support and make sure that their stuff is in order in the beginning, then they can grow and become one of those super big clients that you see. But I'm Mm -hmm. like, they can't get there if they don't know what's going on. Yeah. From the, from the beginning. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for sharing all of this. I I know it's going to be super valuable for the audience, for the listener. (laughs) And so if, and if someone wants to connect with you, follow you, I mean, they could probably just Google you, but where's the best place to connect with you? Where are you the most active these days? So yes, I am on Instagram. If you want to connect with me, well, let me put it this way. If you're a bookkeeper, don't follow me. Let me put it that way. Don't do not follow me. (laughs) Instagram because I I want my clients, my potential clients to follow me. But if you do want to connect with me, you can connect with me on like my personal Instagram. That's perfectly fine. Or Facebook. I'm still on Facebook because like, that's where the fun happens over there. Um, But you can also, you can also email me. Like I have people reach out to me all the time where they're like, like, do you mentor or do you and I'm like, I don't, but I'm, I'd be happy to talk to you. So I'm like, you can send me an email. You can, you know, send me a DM. I will be happy to, I mean, answer whatever questions I can. I'm like, I can just tell you what I know, but yeah, that's, that's, that's where you'll find me. So, or, or you can see my website. If you want to just look at my website, perfectly kept yeah. books, you, you can find me there. <laughs> yeah. I want to like the note about like, don't follow me if you're a bookkeeper on Instagram. I it messes up the algorithm. It does. <laughs> it really it does. It will just feed my profile to more bookkeepers <laughs> instead of my ideal clients. So no, no shade, but that's what happens. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cause I was like, why am I seeing all this bookkeeping stuff? And I was like, okay, let me, let me fix this. So yeah, but I am happy to like, if anyone ever wants to reach out, like, I mean, I am an email person, like I do see my email. So you, you're more than welcome to send an email and I will respond. So awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. And my one last question, actually, I just remembered (laughs) because we had talked about this before we hit record. My one last question would be like for anyone starting their business or 
in the early stages of their business and maybe thinking about joining the bookkeeping business accelerator or any of our other options, what would you say was the, your favorite part, I guess, or the most beneficial part of the program? For me, it was, it was, it was having a community of people that was like the most beneficial part. So like, I love when we had the calls and like if we had a situation or something, we could all, we could talk through it. We can get feedback from other people. We can figure it out. And having having people to help you figure things out is so helpful because when you do go out, go off to start a business, it is kind of lonely because you don't have, like, you don't have coworkers sitting next to you. And, mm-hmm. you know, usually, you know, that work, that normal work environment, it, it isn't there. So having people, not just that you can, you know, connect with and that can ask questions, but they're also going through the same thing. So they understand. They're like, hey, I'm, I have a business too. I'm trying to grow it. I'm trying to deal with this. And I, I just had this client that did this, or I had this interaction. Having, having like a safe space to actually come and like ask those questions or figure things out was the most helpful for me because I'm like, I'm like, I want to make sure I do things right. And I want to make sure things are correct. So I'm like having a place to go to and like, whether it's Serena or when we had our calls where we could just ask the questions and we could get an answer or, you know, help you work through something, something you've probably been sitting with. And you're like, I have no idea what to do or am I? I, like, am I thinking right? Or, you know, just having that someone to bounce things off of was, that was the the most beneficial part. Like, yes, the content is great. Like the content is great. The info, like it's going to get you ready. But like, I just feel like the community piece is most important because it is hard. And depending on how you are as a person, because I'm, I'm like, we're all accountants and bookkeepers. So most are like very introverted, very quiet, very, you know, you keep to yourself, but having just an outlet to be able to like, if you need to be like, oh my goodness, what in the world is going on? Like, this is crazy. You, you have people to go to that will understand and that will help you along the way versus, you know, signing up for some program and you're just kind of left, you just kind of left like by yourself. It's like, Hey, sign up for my program and you do it and you don't really have true like live support because for me that's what's most beneficial because I'm like I'm like I can go through this course all day long but like when situations come up like real life stuff comes up how can I handle that so having a place to go to was the biggest biggest thing for us for for me and I think I guess I could probably speak for all of us I think that was very helpful because I'm like we all showed up to the calls like we were always there and it was it was just great like we would ask questions or something would come up and then someone would be like oh well I had this happen or oh this is ha-, you know this is happening and or we or even just to celebrate like you yeah. know when you know someone said oh I signed this client I did this I it's just a great time a great way to have a space to go to, to do all those things. So from the good to the bad, like having a space to go to is, that's the most helpful. And that's, that's probably what sticks to my mind. Like, I probably don't remember exactly everything that we covered in the course, like off the top of my head, but I do remember like all the calls that we had where we could walk through things and talk through things. And that was the most helpful for me. Yeah. I, I would have to agree with that. And our communities are, and our calls are still very small. There's usually like at the max amount of, of people, 10. And so I like, I pride myself on like having that small community because everybody has a voice and everybody gets their questions answered. And I think that's so important and it, it makes it less intimidating to get up and, and ask your question because there's not like 5,000 people on the call. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So, all right. Well, thank you again so much for your time today. And I love watching what you're doing. And I'm so, so proud of you. Although like it was all you, (laughs) I just gave a little encouragement along the way. (laughs) And sometimes like, I think sometimes that's all we need. Like, like when I think about, I'm like, I, you you probably remember, I'm like, I was freaking out. Cause I'm like, I do like, this is really, really scary. But I'm like, like now that I've been doing it for a while and I'm like, eh, it's nothing like it's, 
like it's easy it's I like it was always there it was always there within me but I just had to like kind of help to bring that out and now I'm just like yeah like okay yeah no problem (laughs) awesome that's so awesome all right well thank you again so much and we'll talk to you soon thank you for having me thank you to everyone who helps make this podcast possible Content and interviews are produced by me, Serena Shu. Our intro and outro music is written and performed by my brother, Ian Gilliam. Editing is also by Ian using his awesome sound engineering skills along with Descript software. Hosting and publishing is by Buzzsprout. And you can check out the show notes for links to all of these amazing resources and resources mentioned in the episode. Embrace ambition.